Hey folks, so we have what is known as a, this is a glue board. This is a, a mice and insect board and we use it, um, in, you know, this is exclusive what we use for, you know, trapping bugs underneath the refrigerator, the stove. This is where you want to put a monitor. Um, let me move this a little bit over here to get it, kind of get it centered. Um, let me turn it ahead a little bit to, can I do that? Let me uh, to do a little bit more. There we go. It'll start settling in a minute, but here we go. All right. So this is the, the typical monitor glue board that we're using, and you can see this was just picked up from a client um, on Friday. You know, it's Monday today over the weekend. They're still alive. There's still live nymphs on there. That we trapped and the importance of this is understanding where we are in the control this is the only thing that we really have other than the customer telling me what they see um, in in the unit uh, in order for us to determine the control that we're getting now what i want to show you is this is after three months of doing service this is a a, a unit that was severely infested. I mean, this was a heavy infestation. This board, in the previous one, uh, there's probably almost 2x, 3x the number of roaches that we captured. But what I want you to see is what's happening and, and looking at this. Um, and understanding roach biology, and this is when people call me and says, oh, I just want a one-time service. Um, to solve this, it's just you can't do it in a one-time service. The reason you can't do it in a one-time service is because we have to understand the biology, the behavior of this insect, how its, its genetics affects the way we have to do our service. We can't bypass it. If you notice, this is an adult right there. All right, there's an adult. Um, that looks like it's possibly an adult male. Here... We see another adult, and it's still alive. That adult is alive. Um, we have what appears to be an adult here that got squished, damaged. This is an adult, and this is an adult. The rest are nymphs in different stages. What you have here is a newborn nymph. Um, this is feces. The little thing right here you see is feces. But here, let me see if this will, if it'll zoom in a little better. Or, but there's a nymph that's just probably a couple days old. Here we have an Uthica. Here's an egg. And I found that egg and I just placed it there. An egg didn't crawl there by itself. Uh, I placed it. But this egg or Uthica or egg casing is going to have anywhere between 30 and 40 roaches be born from it. We have on this board, we count, we got 35, approximately 35 nymphs. Why this is important. One, two, then three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Yeah, that's an adult. All right, so twenty, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Is that a nymph? Is that hair? All right, so 32, 33, and this little nymph that was just born, you can see it's still alive. It's, it's little antennas are wiggling, and this just got caught. So 35 is what we said, I think, and then we have 1, 2, 3, and let's say 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 adults. All right, so we got about a 7 to 35 30 to 7, you know, 35, 36 ratio. When we calculate this, we end up at about a 14% adult to nymph. Generally, that's about right. It's about an 80 20. Um, there's going to be more nymphs because of the egg casing population. And let's say this female, is that a male or a female? It's already been affected, I think, by IGR the way this is, and it's alive. Um, that's a male. Uh, the, the reason you can tell is back here, there's this little thing called a Cersei. See, when I touch it, how 
it moves that and I touch it you see and there, there's a Cersei and then it picks up movement um, and that tells you see this is a male over here flipped around the little Cersei but that's that's your spread apart that's indicating that it's a female see how close together this one is it needs room for the egg casing to be able to populate back there so we basically have more males than we actually have females running around and when people see them let me move zoom that back in um we'll see more usually more males walking why because these females are hiding in little cracks and crevices probably about that wide and if they're hiding in there when they're pregnant which they are about every 60 days on average you know they'll produce three to five of these uthikas on average a year um, in their life cycle which is about a year um, they're going to be hiding in there and they're not moving anything longer than about the size of this paper maybe a foot foot and a half so this is why bait placement is so important where people put bait placement on their counters and it doesn't work because they're not getting the roach which is hiding underneath your cabinet underneath the kick plate they're hiding in places where you're not going to reach them if you're not looking for them this is why most people fail at getting control is they're not putting the bait where that guy is hiding or that girl um, they need to put it exactly where she's hiding in order to feed her because she's not feeding when she's pregnant and she has this egg um, she is not feeding she's not moving she's not drinking she's conserving her energy if you put the food in her face you're going to get the control so understand that you've got an 80 20 rule um, this is what tells us you know how we're getting the control and the goal is that every time we go we see less less and less until we get to zero uh, that's our goal now this is why is this important when people tell me I just want a one-time service and I explain to the client that they need three services in total this egg takes about formation and hatching let's say about 30 days rough you know depending on humidity and temperature there's a lot of variables um, 30 days from the time it is born and it's less than this to the time it becomes um, an adult is going to be about 60 days so this is a process from here to here is 60 days from Uthika production being born and the whole life cycle is about 90 to 100 days so if I do a service and I only do a one-time service and I got these guys that are being laid she only needs to be inseminated once in her life and she can produce three four five Uthika so she doesn't need to mate again with another male and these are born and I do a service now it, it doesn't kill the egg it doesn't kill the Uthika the only thing that can affect the life cycle of this roach is known as an IGR. And what we're looking at is the deformation of the body. In this case, this looks like it might be, this looks like it's just converted to an adult uh, from being a nymph, which is, you know, see this life cycle right here. This is a large nymph. And what we're looking for is the deformation of the body to indicate that the insect growth regulator is working and damaging the um, antenna damaging the wings uh, we're inspecting the board everywhere you know here's one right here here's a classic example let me see if i can flip this up and if i can do it there yeah see see the the deformation it doesn't look right um it's been dead probably a while too um we're looking for those signs to let us know that the IGR is working because the only thing an insect growth regulator is going to prevent is from one of these little guys becoming an adult like this by damaging their their chitin production, uh, which is what they use to make the exoskeleton. Uh, that crunchy brown substance on the outside is from chitin, which is a polymer of different, um, almost sugars, um, made up and... and it's a polymer makes up that crunchy exterior also makes the egg so it helps in damaging it what we're hoping is that with the bait the IGR the dust bait that we're using is enough to get the control and break up this life cycle so that this doesn't convert into one of these 
And in order for us to do that, well, we have to go back and inspect and monitor this and know that it's working, not just assume that the, the dependency, if anybody puts a dependency on chemical, they failed already because chemical is not a guarantee. By the time this customer calls me, they already fogged, they already put bait, they already used the tablets, they already got boric acid powder everywhere. They tried everything and they failed to get control because they failed to understand the biology and the chemistry. So the goal here is, you know, if we do a, a 60 day service, then we got to come back and hope that these didn't hatch. But look, look at the evidence that they do. It's an 80 20 rule. You can't, you can't do away with the biology. You have to, you have to address it, deal with it and understand it, that we're working around this biology to get the control. And, our goal is to get rid of all of these by putting them where they're hiding. So that means sticking our head underneath inside those cabinets, getting our bodies in there, putting the bait exactly where they're hiding. And I have tons of videos that show you that, um, how to do this. Put it where they are so that they will eat it, uh, that they will die, and then wait for one of these to hatch to deal with this cycle in 30 days. So I come back in 30 days. And we deal with this again, and we start placing bait everywhere again. We wait another 30 days. We come back and we do this again. And, and because the, that's the only way you're going to get rid of it is to pull that refrigerator, to pull that stove, to go underneath all the cabinets, inspect everything, and do it. It's follow-up, follow-up, inspection, inspection, inspection is the secret to getting control of German roaches. It isn't a one-time service. I know what people would want. They want, you know, to do it once. They don't want to spend the money, but they've already, because they've already spent a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars on products that have failed. And now they have to pay a professional between 400 and 500 dollars to solve this problem over the next 90 days. And that is just the reality of what we deal with uh, as professionals and why we do it the way we do it. So I hope this video has been helpful to understand. Uh, if it has, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below and go ahead and, and share it with your friends. Hey, this is Frank the Pesky wishing you a spectacular day.